Hi everybody, this is Dwayne with Lily's Landing Resort Marina. It is Friday, June the 26th. We're up at Lookout Island and as you can see, it is pretty crowded up here today. We're gonna start the one cast. I'm still in kind of shallow water, so we're gonna go downstream some a little bit and get out of this um, eddy and in some deeper water and start the one cast. I've got on a 16th ounce white jig on two pound test and my backup rod is four pound test 16th ounce scoping and ginger jig. I got the two units of water running it's about noon o'clock and they're supposed to turn it up the four units here shortly it's starting to get pretty breezy and muggy out here and I think we've got some pop-up showers getting ready to move in. The 16th ounce jig might be a little light for the wind that we got. I'm going to turn the boat around and get us backing up into this eddy some. going to try the one cast right here. So that water comes around the backside of the island kind of slower right there and then drops off into this deep channel. I'm going to try and fish the edge of that drop off where it rolls in down there and right on that seam line if I can get us in the right position. And here we go. So that current is coming down at me pretty hard. might have touched bottom a little bit right there, but I doubt it. I'm moving the boat pretty good, trying to keep us in this seam. And now we're gonna start drifting with it some. I had a jerk baiting guide trip this morning where um, all they wanted to do was try for a big fish, all in or nothing. I think we boated four fish this morning and we did get one rainbow over 20 inches long right at the end of the trip, right at 9.30. And it was just above Fall Creek in the trophy area that we caught that. We were throwing the 110 series jerk baits this morning. We had several other hookups and fish swiping at it. Had one real big one hook up just up here um, below Trophy Run but above Lookout Island that came out of the water three or four times before it finally spit the lure. Would have liked to have seen that one. That was a nice fish. But sometimes that's just the way it is when you're throwing them jerk baits is you're looking for that one good fish doesn't always happen, but sometimes it takes three or four hours to get into that one good fish. It's just about committing to sticking to that bait. If you throw it right and long enough, retrieve it right, it will eventually find you a good fish. Uh, haven't really talked to anybody else, so nothing officially on the one cast. We're kind of getting out of the eddy now. The trolling motor is about to choke itself out, so I'm going to try and fix that. And we're going to work down the bluff bank, try and hit some of these pockets and the eddies along this bluff. The sun's been pretty bright. We're just now starting to get some cloud cover, and it's a pretty good flow, so I'm thinking there might be a fish or two tucked in along that bluff bank over there. We'll try and get a little closer to it so I can fish it a little better. My line just went slack all of a sudden like I had a fish hit it. I 
believe it's bouncing along the bottom now. This midday can be some of the toughest fishing with that bright sun. Those fish are down deep. So you gotta get stuff down on the bottom. I like to fish this deeper water when it's bright like this. And that's where we pulled most of our bites from this morning was in the deeper water. There was bottom. There's bottom again. So I'm getting down there with that 16th ounce jig and two units of water running. And it's just a matter of bouncing that by a fish's face, a hungry fish's face. Here comes Captain B. He's always very courteous when he boats by and slows down, not to make any wake. Hey, we want to be on one cast. We're on it right now. He wants to be on the one cast. Cover up my here. Wave at him, everybody. <laughs> There's a one cast fans out there, so they'll get to be on that tonight. We'll turn this back around and continue fishing. Captain B, Brian, he fishes a lot of jigs up in the trophy up here, area up here. And he's uh, really good at getting people on fish, jig fishing. There's a bottom rock fish, maybe a log fish. I couldn't tell. So I think I broke that off. We will set this one to the side and pick up. This one's got four pound test with a 16th ounce jigs. I don't know how well it's gonna get down to the bottom, but it is sculping and a little bit of ginger in there, almost straight sculping with a brown head 16th ounce. And we're going to start getting that in pretty close to the bank. And just letting it sink down there. Fish these bluff banks. There's a lot of boulders and timber and stuff. And you can lose a lot of jigs coming down through here sometimes. I had a guide trip. And this must have been six or seven years ago. And they were running four units of water. And we had had some shad introduced into the system. Some of the shad kill was happening. So we were fishing eighth ounce white jigs. And it was a father and son. The son was probably in his mid 20s. And I explained to them that we've got to let these jigs sink down on the bottom. If we don't let them get down on the bottom, not losing a jig every now and then, we are not going to catch fish. Well, they listened to me. They let those jigs sink down to the bottom quite well, and we lost 82 jigs in four hours. But they did catch an 11 and a half pound brown, so that was worth it. I think that's the most tying I've done on a guide trip. They were just basically letting them sink down and, and dragging them, and every now and then, every 15 or 20 seconds, giving a little pop. But, we sure did catch a lot of fish. We lost a lot of jigs, but we caught a lot of fish. Well, that is bottom. I almost thought it was a fish for a second. Well, it feels like fishing line. I think it pulled off. Got it back. I think it was fishing line. Got a big boulder right here and an eddy behind it. I'll cast right in that eddy behind the boulder. That's kind of the stuff you're looking for when you're drifting down through here. That sun is beating down on me now. It's hot. We've got some clouds getting ready to cover it up though. Yeah, 
Got another real nice eddy right here underneath this tree. I'm gonna throw this over into that. I always kind of like to be looking downstream to where my next possibility of casting is, my next little spot I want to hit. Another nice eddy right over there. And I like throwing it over in this shade also. There's a little bit of shade over here from that bluff. I talked to um, one of our guests, Alan, as I came up. They've been dragging, they just started, they were dragging scuds up by the cable and said they got into a lot of moss, so they switched over to dragging the little crankbaits little jerk baits and they had caught one fish so far on their drift. They were down about the, just above the narrows when I talked to them. And uh, I told them that there's a lot less moss from Lookout Island down through here to the narrows, so they might try that scud and a Surrey San Juan worm dragging that again. That worked okay. I believe it was either yesterday or the day before we drug those a little bit and caught some fish on them. But there is definitely a noticeable difference in the amount of moss from Lookout Island. There is bottom again. So I'm getting that down there. And that one broke. So we are going to retie that. I did bring a couple of extra jigs. Got some, some nicked up line there. So I'm going to break that off, get rid of that. Felt like it was drug across the log or a rock or something. Just nicked up a little bit. That'll cost you a fish if you don't get rid of that stuff. And down in here somewhere, here's a couple of jigs. Let's come back with another white one. See if, see if we can't find a brown on this bank. Get that lid on there. I don't want all them hooks in my pocket. To use the improved clinch, you just run the line through the eye, bring it back up, do oh five or six full twists. You run that tag in down through that loop by the eye that you've created. When you do that, there's another loop further up the line. You stick that tag in back up through that other loop and get it all wet. Friction heat weakens monofilament, so make sure it's good and wet. Slides down there. Don't weaken your knot that way. And then cut off the tag in. All right, back to white. See if we can't lose this one. Closer. I can see that white jig just sinking and sinking and sinking. They were supposed to turn it up to four units at two o'clock for a little while today. Boy, that was a thump. That line just jumped. But I didn't catch anything. And I think they're supposed to shut it back down to two units again all night like they did last night. Makes a pretty good flow for drift fishing. I have noticed that the bite has been a little bit better the first two hours, two and a half hours of daylight. And then you really got to start working for them. big boulders coming up down here that I like to throw around. I think I can get one more cast right under that tree.
Here's my big boulder, so I'm going to reel in. Slow our drift down some. Now, tough choice. Do I want the front side or the back side? Let's go for the front side. It's a nice little pocket right there. I can let it sink there for a second or two and then bring it in and hit the back side. See some logs down there, bring it over that log, drop it down. That is good brown trout territory. Boulders and logs, deep water. I can see that jig down there. I saw it hit something. Must have been the rest of that log. And now for the eddy. Hard to believe nobody was home in that eddy. I can see my jig. It's probably down there eight or nine feet deep. Here comes a big stump. I'm gonna lift it over that and drop it down next to the side of it. Another big tree limb coming, lift it over the top of that, drop it down the back side of it. There's just all kinds of timber and stuff right down through here. Just love. All right. Nobody wanted that. water is really getting clear. I'm able to see that jig way out there, way down deep. And I don't see anybody chasing it when it comes in. We are about halfway down the bluff hole in between Lookout and the Narrows now. Just about the golf course and I found a rock or a stick. I see it's right on top of a stick over there. Well, that didn't want to break at all. And we'll go back to a scoping one now. up line, we'll get rid of that. Scoping and ginger. and lots of kayakers out here today. Lots of boat traffic down there by the resort. I'll leave that tag in on there and see if that makes a difference. Sometimes I'm not so sure the fish really see that.
pretty good shade right through here. And a couple of good eddies coming up. Mm, I think that was bottom. Another rock there. good eddy and it looks like a fresh washout or something over here from this fresh dirt coming down the bluff Then we have lost most of our breeze. The sun is hot. If that water wasn't 52 or 53 degrees, I'd be real tempted to jump in it right now. see bottom all the way out here right now. the breeze. That feels good. Well, I thought I felt something, and I did. I felt the moss fish. I just caught barely the end of a twig there, but it got it out. There are a couple of logs laying in there. Our breeze has escalated to a pretty strong wind.
I thought that was Brent Raider, but it's not. Oh yeah, it is Brent Raider. He's another one that's very courteous with his boat etiquette. Fish this down through the narrows. Hopefully we catch one pretty soon or I'm gonna have the skunk monkey take home with me. Well, that rod doesn't have hardly any line at all left in it. I think I'll switch back over to that one with the two pound test. This has got about one layer of line left on it. It's going to have to be respooled. All right, white's not working out here. Scoping and ginger's not working out here. I believe I brought a black and yellow. Let's give that a try on the two pound test. Rig this one up real quick. There's a black and yellow. breeze always puts just a little bit more of a challenge and tying on a new jig get them feathers wet just a little bit it helps tame them down Just a couple hundred more yards to fish here. And that two pound test casts a lot easier than that four pound test. Feels like about twice as easy. And yet, I hit bottom right there. We are just about to enter the narrows. I see a log or something laying out there. I'm going to throw right on the back side of that. There.
Still no chasers either. I can see that black one coming in quite a ways too. There is a fish. And he's got a pretty good head shake. It's right at the top side of the narrows. I'm gonna try and chase him just a little bit. Wow, we had to work for that bite. And he looks like a pretty decent fish. Black and yellow. Well, he saw the boat. And he saw it again. Pretty skinny water right now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use the net on this one. He is almost ready to cry, Uncle. I say that and he Kiss me another good run, peel and drag off. I'm trying to pull us away from all these trees over here in the narrows so that I can mess with this fish when I get him in closer. Stay out of the trolling motor. He might be ready. We'll see here. Got him. It's about oh, 17, 18, maybe close to 19 inches, but just a chunker of a fish. Got some absolute shoulders on him. Get that jig out first. Oh, hold still, there we go. All right, just making sure that camera's still running. I thought I heard it beep. I don't know if I can get my hand around him or not. There we go, we had to work for it, but it sure was a good one. I'd say he's probably 18. He's a little tired now from fighting that two pound test. There he goes, swimming out of it. All right, we are all the way down through the narrows where it starts getting deep again. And, uh, it's going to be tough to top that one, I think. So I'm going to call it an episode. Got a bald eagle flying across coming up. The two baby eagles nest right behind there. They came out of the nest about three weeks ago, and they've been hanging out in here in the mornings. They'll holler at mom and dad wanting them to catch them a fish and feed them. But you see them quite often right through here right now. It's, it's kind of neat to see. We sure do appreciate you all watching. That black and yellow 16th ounce sealed the deal and I left the tag end on it there. It's about a, I don't know if you can see it or not, I'll try and pull it for you there. It's about a 
inch and a half tag in there so he didn't seem to mind that too much like and share us subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll try it again tomorrow thank you everybody